house moved for the admittance into chambers, a very rare feat. Hardly would we entertain or invite people into the chambers. But yesterday, unanimously, we moved for the admission into chambers in recognition of his selfless and patriotic service to our country and to our brothers and sisters in South Africa that we admit Mr. Oscar Oyema, the Chairman, Managing Director of Airpeace Airlines. I believe we are all witness to what he has done for our brothers and sisters in the last couple of weeks. We witnessed this, the scenes of Nigerians on TV being reunited with their families and friends. The emotional scenes brought about or made possible by only one man amongst many men, a businessman who's in business like every other businessman to make money, but who sacrificed his primary purpose of business and at no cost, and I dare say at a loss, deployed the use and service, or the use of his planes or his aircraft for days to bring back our brothers and sisters who were facing imminent danger in South Africa. Honorable colleagues, this we thought was a feat that should be commended. And we hereby commend Honorable Mr. Oscar Oyema and recommend him to the federal government for higher honors in Nigeria. We will give an opportunity for one or two people to say one or two things. I will also, but before that, I think it is only appropriate for the recipient of this commendation to be given 10 minutes, 10 minutes, so that we can better understand what he has been doing in the last one week. I am aware at the first instance, he brought in about 178 Nigerians. I am aware that since then, he's brought in another 320. Perhaps, I think, maybe yesterday or the day before, I'm not quite sure. And I'm aware that as we speak today, his aircraft has gone again and bringing in even more Nigerians back home to safety. So, Yemen, on behalf of the House and the People's House, I commend you. We appreciate you. We thank you for your commitment for your patriotism, and we use you as a point of contact to all of the Nigerians, wherever they may be, to emulate this behavior, this conduct, which you have so selflessly exhibited. We will now call on Mr. Allen Oyema to please approach the podium and give us a 10-minute briefing.
got my number from one of the colleagues. This is a few villagers around there. Gave me a call. We would be the first to do that. I was really, really touched. It's only talented. So even if I didn't come, even if I was not invited to this uh, chamber today, you had already honored me beyond words. You touched my soul. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This is what we require in this country from leadership. What you've done for me today, we go out there to send a very positive signal, positive signal to the private sector and to Nigerians and all citizens as a whole. That is that private government that we're taking some decisions that will touch lives of your compatriots. There are people all over the place who will recognize what you've done and give you the necessary support. I thank you all for allowing me to come here to address you this morning. I've now been so honored once again. I've now been so honored. It was a spontaneous decision to do this. I didn't do it for any publicity. In fact, I was at the Nigerian Civil Education Authority. Of those who have lost everything they've worked for. I tried. What did I read? When I got into the aircraft to welcome them, somebody was shouting down the aisle that she, she lost two of her children. And the only two remaining, she never knew she could come back to Nigeria alive with them again. They had lost hope. So she was saying, God bless you, you're not a human being, you are God, just God sent, you're not a victim, I broke down. That was why I cried. And I'm sure the whole world joined me in crying you know, when they were looking at this picture. And uh, I want to use this opportunity to thank you once again. I don't want to take most of your time, but to tell you that APC is ready to evacuate Nigeria. We are ready to go into South Africa as long as there is one single Nigerian remaining in that country to be evacuated. <laughs> and we are really free of charge because money is not everything. Yes. The kind of support you've gotten from Nigeria through your commendations and everything, it has really gladdened our heart to the extent that my pilots and my cabin crew who are doing this rescue mission who would always stand out there for 24 hours because we are, they were trying to frustrate us, they didn't want us to evacuate. They told them the Nigerian High Commission not to do it, but they told them to, we can't stop this private citizen. Those cabin crews stood up for 24 hours because they delayed us for 15 hours before allowing us to do the first evacuation. They came back to Nigeria and refused to take the allowance. They said, this is our own contribution to the nation of Nigeria. In the last one week, this country has bonded. In the last one week, this nation has bonded. No more Aosa, no more Yoruba, no more Igbo, and Ijo, and this. Let me use this opportunity to speak to all of you here, the representatives of our people. Please, let me tell you this. As long as we fight against each other, so long shall we not have a nation. But if we continue to fight for each other, take this for example. If Ablazi, the one that gets hypnotics, wakes up one morning and goes to Imo State and comes out from Imo and says, look, federal government, the federal roles in Imo State are dilapidated. You must do it. This is somebody from Canada now fighting for people in Imo State. Take for instance the Igbo people are even their chief. They are now becoming caught up tomorrow and says, the people in the north, they need a lot of water to irrigate their farms and to farm it. Federal government, you must do something for these northerners. You must do something for people in Zamfara to be able to go to their farms peacefully, to be able to do it. See, this is coming crisscross from all over the place. We have a nation. But the situation where we allow ourselves, go back to our cocoons and fight for only, only our own section in a multicultural Nigeria, is a recipe for danger. I'll leave you with this. It is only when, and I said only when, we start fighting for each other as against what is happening now, can we have a nation. I believe in broad nationalism as against ethnic nationalism. 
I want Nigerians to first and foremost say I'm Nigerian. The American state. The American nation, <coughs> excuse me, is the melting pot of all ethnic nationalities in the world. You have outside America, you have Igbo America, you have Yoruba America, you have Tif America, you have Anglo America from, from England, you have Franco America from France, you have Russo America from Russia. But once they get that passport, what they profess, when, when, when you encounter him, the first thing he says is America. When you encounter a Nigeria, the first thing he says, I'm Igbo, I'm Hausa, I'm Fulani, I'm this. This country is blessed. 378 ethnic nationalities, not 250, that made up this country. That is the recipe for strength. Can we decide this day to harness this strength in diversity? Thank you, God bless you.